Good day everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Casaligan Vlogs. Today we'll be talking about speaking mathematically, and this is mathematics in the modern world. So variables. A variable is sometimes thought of a mathematical jandu because you can use it as a placeholder when you want to talk about something but either first you imagine that it has one or more values but you don't know what they are or you want whatever you say about it to be equally true for all elements in a given set and so you don't want to risk to restrict it to considering only a particular concrete values for it. The advantage of using variable is that it allows you to give a temporary name to what you are seeking so that you can perform concrete computations with it help to discover its possible values. So again, variables is a sometime thought as a mathematical gen do. So we have here in a sentence is there a number with the following property doubling it and adding three gives the same result as squaring it by looking at the sentence or in the example we could say that it's harder for us to understand if we will not make the make use of our variable in replacing the variables we could easily understood the sentence or the problems because the states that is there a number x with a property that is 2x plus 3 and x is equal to x squared compared to this sentence it's hard for us to interpret the way when we will not be using a variable to this part all right so we have your example number one are there numbers with a property that the sum of their squares equals the square of their sum and number two, given any real number, its square is a non-negative. So we could uh, rewrite this, all of this following. So example of this one, are there numbers with a property that the sum of the square is equal to the square of the sum? So we have to represent that one into a variable. So in this case, we could have a number one in this statement we could rewrite this one into a variable that are their numbers a and b with the property a squared plus b squared is equal to a plus b squared so we could write in this way are there numbers a and b with a property a squared plus b squared is equal to the quantity of a plus b squared if we're going to interpret this one using the variable we could easily understand the way it goes unlike here in the example number one if that is a full sentence we could say that it's harder for us to understand because uh, this is not stated. Most, partially, most of the students could really understand the problem if it is stated in the variable. That's why variable is very important because it would serve as a temporary. Okay, you are imagining a temporary one. Okay, so we have here, we could write also this one as are there numbers a and b such that a squared plus b squared is equal to a plus b quantity squared so we could write in this way are there num are there numbers a and b such that a squared plus b squared is equal to the quantity of a plus b squared or we could have do there exists any numbers a and b such that a squared plus b squared is equal to a plus b squared okay so we could rewrite in this way 
uh, the three of these examples. So we could write it this way. Are there numbers A and B with a property A squared plus B squared is equal to the quantity of A plus B squared. Okay, so that's it for number one. In example, we have number two given any real number. Its square is not negative. So we could have, we could write this part as given any real number. So we could represent number r, we could represent a number r, r squared is non-negative. Okay, so very simple because we have represented a number because when you have its square, we could simply r squared. Or we could have for any real number, r r squared is greater than or equal to zero because that is equal to non-negative numbers or we could have this way as for all real numbers okay for all real numbers r r squared is greater than or equal to zero the same way with this part so we could now have three way of rewriting the statement into a variable form though in number in the statement here above so this is in a sentence form and we could write that one into a variable form so that it could be easily understood by someone who is uh, taking or someone who is looking at the statement all right, so we have tried this at home. So use variables to write the following sentences formally. Are there numbers whose squares are smaller than the number themselves? And B, are prime numbers in the integer greater than one and whose only positive div divisors are one and itself? You could rewrite in the way that uh, we, that, that could be easily understood by someone who is reading the text. Okay, so try this one at home. So next we have some important kinds of mathematical statement. The first one is universal statement says that a certain property is true for all element in elements in a set. A well-written universal statement should include one of the universal quantifiers. So we have to remember that these are uh, Quantifiers for universal statement, all, every, and each. Example, all positive numbers are greater than zero. By the universal quantifiers all, we can say that this statement is a universal statement. Next, we have conditional statement says that if one thing is true, then the some other thing also has to be true. The conditional statement contains versions of the words if then okay take note of this part we have if then example if 378 is divisible by 18 then 378 is divisible by 6 so the first statement is true then the second statement has to be true because 378 is really divisible by 6 so example number two if you get good grades then you will get into a good college so of course when you have good grades so in high school so you'll get have a good college so that's conditional statement next we have existential statement says that there is at least one thing for which property is true the following are the exist existential quantifiers for some there exists there is a or for at least one Example, there is a prime number that is even. And what is this? This which is at least one thing which property is true, that is two, which is even, and that is prime. Okay, so we have here a quick reference of the symbols used and their meanings follows. First, we have there exists. If you can see the symbol, the symbol reads as there exists. 
and next we have belongs to and this one is such that and n is the set of natural numbers one to infinity and this one is the set of integers and this one is for all values of so take note of these symbols because as we are going to take this subject we could we would have to encounter or we could encounter these symbols okay so next part we have some example of existential statements so we could rewrite of this some um, uh, existential statement into a more concise and legible way. So example, there exists a natural number n such that n times n is equal to 36. So previously we have here the exist symbol. So we could write this one into a very more concise and legible way. For example, there exists. So in, the, in this statement, we could write this one as there exists a natural number n, which is n. Okay, such that the product of is equal to 36. So we could write this one, there exists a natural number n, such that the product of n times n is equal to 36. So we could write this example number two in this way. There exists an integers, integer z such that z squared is equal to 25. So we could write that there exists integer z such that z squared is equal to 25. Okay. Next is there is at least one number n belonging to a set of natural numbers such that a cross or a times n is equal to a so we could write this one as there exists a natural there exists a number n natural number n such that a times n is equal to a so these are the statement of existence existential statement in a more concise and legible way all right so we could rewrite this one into a more concise and legible way so next we have universal conditional statement it's a statement that is universal and conditional one of the most important facts about universal state conditional statement is that they can be written in the ways that make them appear to be purely universal or purely conditional. Example of this part, we have for all animals A, if A is a dog, then A is a mama. So this universal conditional statement, we could rewrite in many statements. That is, in a way that it makes it conditional nature explicit, but it's universal nature implicit. So you're writing universal conditional statement. Example, if a dog, if A is a dog, then A is a mama. And or if an animal is a dog, then an animal is a mama. Okay, so that's the rewriting. So let's have fill in the blanks to write the following statement. So first is for all real numbers x, if x is non-zero, then x squared is positive. So in this way, we could fill in the block the following. So if a real number is non-zero, then its square is, of course, in this first statement, for all real numbers x, if x is non-zero, then x squared is a positive. If it is being rewrite here, okay, if A is a real number is non-zero, then its square is, of course, positive. Okay. For all non-zero real numbers, x, x, then we have x squared is positive based on the first statement here. If blank, if x is blank, then blank. So we can say that if x is non-real 
non-zero non-zero real numbers then x squared is positive so now if x is non-zero real numbers so x squared is positive next is the square of any zero non-zero real number is of course positive and all non-zero real numbers have what positive squares okay positive squares or the squares that are positive okay so all non-zero real numbers have positive squares or squares that are positive so that's it for example number one so stop try this so for all real numbers x if x is greater than 2 then x squared is greater than 4 so you have to fill in the missing here in the statement so these are the way you are going to rewrite the statement so that is it stop try this so now let's proceed now with universal existential statement is a statement that is universal because its first part says that a certain property is true for all objects of a given type and it is existential because its second part asserts the existence of something e example every real number has an additive in first so every real numbers the first statement is for a certain property that is true for all object in a given type so every real number and is existential because the second part asserts the existence of something and the existence is the additive inverse of that real numbers example we have here three and the additive is negative three okay for all every real numbers okay so we can rewrite universal existential statement all real numbers have additive inverses or we could have for all real numbers r there is an additive inverse of r for all real numbers r there are real numbers s such that s is an additive inverse for r so this way these are the way that we're going to rewrite the universal existential statement Let's have fill in the blank here. Every part has a lead. So every part has a lead by rewriting this one. All parts have leads. So we have here have leads. All parts have leads. For all parts P, there is, okay, so in the first part, every part has a lead. So for all parts P, there is a lead for p and for all parts p there is a lead l such that l is a lead for p okay let's go back here every part has a lead so the first statement all parts of course have a lead have leads second for all parts p there is a lead for p okay so lead for p because you have named the variable p so therefore there is a lead for p for all parts p there is a lead l such that l is a lead for p because p is the part and l is a lead so therefore l is a lead for p okay that's it so stop trying this, fill in the blanks to write the following statement or the first statement. All battles have cap, so every battle black. For all battles B, there is a black. And for all battles B, there is a cap C such that black. Okay, that's it. So you're going to fill in. Try this one at home. So next is existential universal statement. It's a statement that is existential because its first part asserts a certain object exists and it's universal because the second part says that the object satisfies a certain property for all things of a certain kind. Example, 
there is a positive integer that is less than or equal to every positive integer. So let us have the way how to write uh, existential universal statement. So some positive integer is less than or equal to every positive integer. So there is a positive integer m that is less than or equal to every positive integer. Or we could rewrite this way as there is a positive integer m such that every positive integer is greater than or equal to m. Or we could write this another way. So there is a positive integer m with a property that for all positive integers n, m is lesser than or equal to n. So let's have an example. Fill in the blanks. Okay, so write the following statement in three different ways. So the first statement, the given statement is, there is a person in my class who is at least as old as every person in my class. So we have here the first statement that we're going to fill in the blank is, some blank is, some blank is at least as old as Black. So there is a there is a person in my class who is at least as old as every person in my class. So therefore, we can say that some person in my class is at least as old as every person in my class. Okay, every person in my class so we have here next there is a person p in my class such that p is at least as old as every person in my class okay next we have there is a person p in my class with the property that for every person Q in my class, P is at least as old as Q. Okay? So we have here, there is a person P in my class with a property for every person Q in my class, P is at least as old as Q, being compared here from P to Q. Okay? That's it for fill in the blanks for this part. So try this at home. So fill in the blank to write the following statement in three different ways. The, the given statement is there is a bird in a flock that is at least as heavy as every bird in the flock. So there are three statements. So fill in this part. And the second uh, try this at home is the reciprocal of any positive real number is a positive. So there are statements that you're going to fill up. So fill in. So given any positive real number R, the reciprocal of blank. And for any real number R, if R is blank, then blank. Then if a real number R blank, then blank. So I hope everyone you enjoy the moment while I'm discussing here. So this time, so you have to uh, answer all the try this given and thank you so much for listening and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel Castaligan Vlog. Thank you and God bless everyone. See you for the next topic.